Hi everyone, I'm Troy Martin, TM Fitness. I'm talking about sleep. So I've got kind of quite a lot to get through here, so I'll try not to bore you all to sleep, or maybe I will. So if you wanna know more about, about sleep, the importance of sleep and some practical things you can do to improve your sleep, you can look at the sleepcouncil.org uh, or look up some of the stuff that the World Health Organization have done on this. They've, there's a PDF that you can find online. Basically, sleep is super, super important, not just for stopping you from feeling sleepy, but it's massively important for your physical and mental health. So wakefulness, as they call it, so, you know, the, the being awake when you should be asleep or insomnia, if you like, or disruptive sleep, whatever. Wakefulness uh, is categorised by the World Health Organisation as a carcinogen. That means that it has quite a high uh, correlation with increased risk of cancer and all cause mortality. So the optimal, optimal range of, of sleep, uh, according to Sleep Council, is seven to nine hours per night. Seven to nine. And to put that into perspective, the average American gets less than six hours a night. And probably, I would probably say that's the same in the UK. Most of the people I know probably get less than six hours sleep per night. So sleep happens in uh, four stages. So a complete sleep cycle has four stages to it. Um, the deepest stage of that sleep is called rapid eye movement sleep or REM or REM sleep. And that's when you're dreaming. So if you're not dreaming, it doesn't matter if you remember your dreams or not, but if you're not dreaming at night, you're not in a deep restful sleep. Uh, so you may be sleeping for nine or ten hours, but still waking up feeling like shit. And it's probably because you're not completing those four stages of the sleep cycle. Uh, each stage lasts for about an hour and a half. So you want to complete at least one full cycle of, of sleep per night. OK, so four stages of sleep per cycle, at least one full cycle per night, which is why seven to nine is optimal. Uh, and less than six is pretty bad. So the health implications of poor sleep. Obviously, you'll have less energy because you're, you're not recovering. You're not, you know, your body isn't repairing itself. Um, your mood will go down because you're tired. So you, you're just more grumpy. Uh, your productivity will go down because you're grumpy and you have less energy, which is going to affect, you know, your work and your sporting performance and everything else. Alertness goes down. And this one's really, really important because it's actually been shown in research that those people who get less than six hours sleep in a night, when they then get in their car and drive to work, their level of alertness and their, their reactions are impaired to the same level as somebody who has had two or three pints of lager. Think about that. You're effectively drunk driving if you're driving on sleep deprivation. So it's not just you that you're potentially doing harm to, it's other people as well. The, the bad stuff that increases when you, uh, when you're not getting good sleep. So hypertension, your blood pressure goes up, uh, which obviously leads to problems with cardiovascular health. Uh, your insulin resistance goes up, which again leads to uh, cardiovascular health problems. It may lead to increased risk of cancer. It will lead to uh, fat storage and make, uh, make weight loss harder and um, all cause mortality as well, which is, you know, it's not just the cancer and the, the heart disease, it's many other chronic illnesses that can be worsened or, or the risk of them becoming worse is increased when you don't get a good night's sleep. So it's really, really important. And if you're a sportsman or an athlete or a recreational athlete, somebody who's recreationally fit, sleep is really, really important because your body repairs itself at sleep. And another interesting fact that I haven't put on here that's just come to me, if weight loss is your goal, don't forget that 24 hour energy balance includes sleep. So while you're asleep, you can be burning anything between five to 800 calories a night, depending on your size and the length of time you're asleep for. Think about that, five to 800 calories in a night's sleep doing nothing. Okay, so that's all the scaremongering stuff. So practicalities, what can you do to improve your sleep? Um, you can exercise. 
Exercise, not too much, not too little. So sensible amounts of exercise. The more you exercise, the easier it will be to get to sleep and stay asleep because your body will need that rest and recovery. Uh, but then con conversely, the more exercise you do, the more sleep you need. Nutrition. So eating a balanced diet, understanding energy balance. So if you're in a chronic energy surplus because you're eating too much food, that can negatively affect your sleep. And if you're in a chronic energy deficit and you're massively restricting calories because it's New Year and you're doing too much exercise and eating too little food, that will affect your sleep as well. And then obviously hydration. Uh, and I've put an asterisk here because I'm going to talk about caffeine in a moment. Just getting these two right, getting your exercise programming right to allow for optimal exercise and benefit from exercise, but optimal recovery from exercise and getting your nutrition right, your, your, your macronutrients and your fibers and your vegetables and your calories and your hydration, getting all that right can have a huge benefit. The clients that I've worked with have all, nearly all the clients that I've worked with, particularly weight loss clients, nearly all of them say that they have some issue with sleep, either getting to sleep or staying asleep. And within the first couple of weeks of getting the exercise and nutrition right, their sleep massively improves. And that's always, for me, that's a big win. That's always a big win with my clients. If, if, you know, if nothing else changes, but their sleep is, is better, all of this improves massively as a result of that. So I've won and they've won. Stress management. Learning to deal with stress, I've talked about that in various videos, so go back and look at those videos, but learning to deal with stress, dealing with, you know, changing the way you think about stress uh, and improving your productivity to reduce the onset of that stress. You know, time management, that kind of thing. Planning, job lists, and here we go, job lists. So this is more of a, a the, the mindset side of it. So if you're struggling to get to sleep at night, like if you can't settle down because your mind's racing, write a job list for the next day because then you don't have to think about it. You put it down on a piece of paper, you've dumped that out, and then you can go to bed you know, with a clear mind and rest. Journaling, so putting your thoughts on paper because it might just be rerunning, replaying the day over and over in your head. So journaling, writing that stuff down, again, it's a brain dump. It gets it out of your head and onto the paper so that you can sleep. Gratitude logs, a really, really good one. Something I get a lot of my clients to do is keeping a gratitude log or a gratitude journal where you just, you spend five, 10 minutes of an evening. This can be like part of your routine as you're winding down for the night. Spend five, 10 minutes just writing down a few things that you were grateful for that day, a few things in your life that you're grateful for. Spend five, 10 minutes just focusing on that and the good sensations and feelings that that brings to you and then roll over and go to sleep. So mindfulness plays into that as well. Uh, and we've seen this. So the, on the mindset side of things, we know for a fact that if you're stressed or anxious, and if you're somebody who's prone to anxious thinking, sleep's always gonna be a bit of a struggle for you. By managing your mind, you're reducing your anxiety, so you may sleep better. Conversely, if you're not sleeping well, it's gonna increase your stress and increase your anxiety. And also depression. So people who struggle with sleep are more prone to depression. People with depression are more prone to insomnia. It's a chicken or egg thing, it, but it's huge. So the poor sleep, you know, and increased wakefulness is is devastating for your mental, emotional health as well as your physical health. This has been shown in the research that you know just 10 to 20 minutes of mindfulness meditation per day can massively not only improve your sleep but improve your levels of stress, anxiety, and, and reduce your depression and self self compassion as well. Just put less pressure on yourself and be more accepting of yourself. Uh, and then coming down to caffeine, so going back to the nutrition side of things, caffeine, caffeine's not bad. Some people are non-responders and can pretty much drink caffeine at any time of the day. I know I, I, I don't, but I have drunk a highly caffeinated drink before bed and I've gone to bed and not have had any problems getting to sleep. I know people that could have a coffee in the morning and still be wired and buzzing at nine o'clock at night. So you've got to understand how your body reacts to caffeine. But for most people, you stop at 5 p.m. Caffeine stays in your system for about six or seven hours. So if you stop at 5 p.m. and you're getting to bed at 
you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night, um, the caffeine should be out of your system by then. And if it's not, if you're still feeling too wired and alert, then cut it back, go back to 4 p.m., 3 p.m., 2 p.m. And if it's still not working, cut it out. Okay, and then some really simple stuff. And these are the really simple things that a lot of people overlook. Room temperature, not too hot, not too cold. Noise. I mean, if you live in a flat that's overlooking a busy road, sometimes it's difficult, especially in the summer when your windows open, it's difficult to manage that noise pollution. But do what you can to reduce any noise pollution the best you can. And good quality pillows and comfortable bedding. Really good quality mattress. If you spend a lot of money on one thing, spend a shit ton of money on a good quality mattress because it can be a lifesaver. Lights. So you don't want any light in the room. Ideally, you want to be in total darkness. TV. Um, so anything that's backlit, a backlit screen like a, a telephone or a PC, uh, any television, um, fluorescent lighting, turn the lights off or dim the lights if you've got a dimmer switch. And for at least an hour before bed, try not to watch TV, try not to stimulate your brain. And when you look at the blue light that you get from a uh, fluorescent lighting or from, from a, a, the, the screen of your phone, circadian rhythm is get into bed because in the evening, your body's winding down and you're starting to produce more of the hormones that produce, you know, that uh, encourage sleep and relaxation. Uh, and then in the morning, the sun comes out, your body starts to release different hormones. So you get a little bit of cortisol in the morning to get you uh, up and alert, and then you produce some dopamine uh, and serotonin throughout the day. And then as the day winds down and the sun sets and everything gets dark, you start uh, uh, releasing uh, melatonin which then sends you to sleep. Bright lights in the evening are going to switch that system off and you're not going to be producing the, the melatonin and the serotonin you're going to be producing probably adrenaline or cortisol and then you're not going to get to sleep. So bright. some people love to have bright lights on in every room all the time it just drives me mad. You know dim the lights you know just dim the lights. So yeah try and get to bed at the same time every night you know, and if you're currently going to bed at midnight every night and then you're up at six for work the next day, go to bed an hour earlier at the very least. If you can't go to bed earlier because you just don't want to, then, you know, maybe think about your life a little bit. What can you do to change your life? Why are you trying to prolong the day so much? You, you dread getting up and, and starting a new day that much? I mean, come on. And then a couple of other things to think about, some supplements maybe that could help. So vitamin D in the AM. If you're lucky enough to live below the equator, uh, you get up and the sun comes out and you get a bit of, of sunlight exposure on your, on your skin or through your eyes and your body produces vitamin D, which is a precursor to serotonin. That's fine. If you live in the UK, like me, uh, this time of year in particular, you're going to need to take a vitamin D supplement and take it in the AM if you can. Uh, and then magnesium, not always necessary. I personally find magnesium helps particularly on heavy training days. So taking a magnesium supplement, two to 400 milligrams is, is safe and effective. Any more than that might make things a little bit, you know, two to 400 milligrams of, of magnesium about half an hour before you go to bed particularly if you're highly uh, highly active and you're doing a lot of exercise can help to relax your muscles a little bit and it's just a suggestion everybody's different i've tried to keep it as simple and concise as possible let me know what you think of that give me a comment below uh, don't forget to subscribe check out my other videos and i will catch you soon Laters.